Airhop, Facebook, and ONF have joined forces to demonstrate a production X app running on the ONF RIC platform using the Facebook SDK, all using ORAN defined standard and pre standard interfaces. Through Open RAN, we bring better and faster wireless service to more people. The integration of the ONF RIC, the Open SDKs from Facebook Connectivity, and AirHop's commercially hardened ESON applications is a great example of how well an Open RAN ecosystem can work. We started with a straightforward application like PCI conflict detection and resolution as a way to prove out how the XAP integration process can work. The quick success of this process showed us that we could readily integrate more complex or advanced near real-time applications on the ONF RIC using ORAN pre-standard and standard interfaces. We are very pleased to have so rapidly demonstrated a true multi-vendor implementation in SD-RAM, where advanced SON functionality has been moved into an X app and integrated with our RIC via an app SDK. At the start of this year, we really just had an idea to work together, but to go from there to designing and implementing a service model and making changes throughout the stack in a very short time speaks volumes of uh, the effort put in by the three engineering teams. And this is really just the beginning of a vertically disaggregated brand. We have big plans uh, to include more companies and more SON RRN use cases in the very next quarter. So stay tuned. The last two years have been pivotal for open RAN or RAN disaggregation. The next frontier, and a very important one, is in the, in the software-defined RAN or RAN programmability space. This is exactly what we're showcasing today. In particular, what we're showing is that an open RAN intelligent controller, which is based on open interfaces and open source code, allows uh, innovative software vendor, in this case, uh, AirHop to bring their uh, solution, integrate it, and take it to market in record speed. They, we have um, we have the ONF RIC platform in the middle here, <clears throat> and we have a ransom. Um, speaks E2 to the RIC. Um, we have um, the SDK, we have the X app, um, and we have the AirHop ESON. Um, so let me zoom in a bit and show you a bit of what's inside, what they do. Um, so the RIC has a bunch of components, and but uh, today I'm going to highlight um, mostly the E2 subscription service and the um, termination service. Um, so the E2T is what talks to the E2 nodes. Um, so the ransom is the component that kind of emulates it for now. And the E2 node has a few cells associated with it. Um, the, the, SD, the app, um, when you see FB-AH-X app, that's the app. Um, I'll, <clears throat> I'll be pointing that out a few times. So this is where um, the logic happens for uh, passing the information through um, between the, the RIC and the ESON service. Um, so the ESON service is running in the, in the, in the cloud in AWS um, for today. Uh, the rest of it is running locally on my laptop in the Helm environment. Yep. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through the messaging that happens between all these components. Um, so the first thing that happens is that the X app requests a subscription uh, through the SDK. So the point of the SDK is to kind of abstract the um, <clears throat> the implementation of of the RIC um, and to make it easy for the app developer to just focus on what they want to do. So the way the message flows is the SDK asks the subscription service, "Hey, I want to subscribe." 
um, to the service model. Um, this, the subscription manager will um, work at, <clears throat> will uh, perform that in the, in the RIC and inform the SDK that you need to connect to the E2 termination and get um, the, uh, start the stream to get the data in. Yep. So the SDK abstracts um, the ONF specific uh, implementation details. So it only has to worry about um, the data. Okay, so <clears throat> after the uh, subscription is set up, um, the um, indication messages will begin to be passed through the passed out of the E2 node into the E2T and into the SDK. Um, and so here, what I have is a the, the example like the um, the indication message format from the ASN one. <clears throat> so the E2 node generates um, messages in the ASN one. Um, it goes to the E2T, which will um, turn them into proto structs, and uh, via gRPC sends the message to the SDK. Um, the SDK will push the messages onto the queue. And the X app will have a um, way to consume this information. After the uh, indication messages are pushed onto the queue, um, the way that the uh, SDK prevents the data is is um, through popping it uh, can can pop the data off the queue. So um, the snippet of code essentially shows you pop off the queue, you parse it, and then you have the um, you have the parse message here. And um, what we do for this particular uh, use case is we want to pass it to the AirHop ESON service. And so um, we just simply register, ESON uh, register, and then we create the cell with the um, ECGI, the PCI, and neighbors. So this is the uh, <clears throat> AirHop ESON UI. We have, uh, I have five nodes in this, five cells in this, but the ones we worried about right now are the first three. Um, we have these three ECGI with three, three PCI, um, and we have, this is the ransom state. So I've, we have this map in here to help illustrate. Um, we have these three nodes, one, two, and three, and they are, uh, these two are connected we have this neighbor list here. And so these uh, these are the three we're talking about with the neighbor relationships. And so what I'll do right now is I will um, change the PCI and you can see it change. So right now I'm going to change um, this third node, 75. And then I'm going to change it to one that doesn't conflict. And you can observe um, the message is going through. So this, uh, I'm going to change this guy. It'll go from three to five, and you'll see the same thing here. Um, the logs here I'm showing is that this is a RAN simulator. Uh, this is the E2T, and these are the, uh, the log messages from the X app. So I have the headers here. Um, so the, the app, it says I found the updated PCI to five, and you'll see here, this changes to five, and this changes to five as well. Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna change it, um, like I can change it to six and it'll change to six. Here and here. And so uh, let me explain the lines here. So green means uh, they're neighbor relationships, but there's no conflict. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a conflict. So I'm gonna change this guy from, um, so since these are neighbors, I'll make it a, a conflict. So I'll change this to two. And what you'll see here is, okay. So I'm gonna change this to two. And then uh, hopefully this uh, line will be clear. So it's got changed to two. The line changes to red, marking a conflict. I'll get, this is where it changes to two. This is the change request from ESON to 124. And this also then flips green. 
showing that it changed to 124. New neighbor. So another uh, another situation where we can have uh, conflicts is when we add a new neighbor. So those three. So we started with these three nodes, um, and you saw that I had two extra ones, and that's what I am using for this uh, use case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so these original three are one, two, and three, and uh, I'm going to and the other two are uh, PCI one and two. So I'm gonna add a connection between the middle one and uh, this other uh, set here. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add, uh, th so these are, the, these are the five nodes here. Um, I'm gonna point this one PCI one to this one, uh, the middle one, like in the slides. And so that's 76 adding 76 as an as a neighbor adding basically forming a relation to between 76 and 74. So 76 for 76 I'm going to specify neighbors uh, existing one and new one. So this is the current one and then the new one. So okay let's let's go. <laughs> So indication messages, adding a neighbor here, you see the confusion. Um, it's actually a pair of confusions here. See the two confusions here and it'll update uh, the PCI. So we changed this one PCI to 256 and we changed this one to 45 to remove the confusions. And uh, you see the new neighbor relationship here. Is that cool? That's pretty cool. Come, sit. Oh, such a good boy.